So, Nils, we're working with the microbit and Python, mm -hmm. and I've wished to program a game in Python for a long time, and I've never done that, so mm -hmm. I thought we'd have a go. Yeah, sure. Sounds like a good idea. And one thing that I'm thinking about with the microbit that would be fun to do is to do a game where the changing of the pictures on the LED display would signify f when I'm supposed to press a button or not. Mm -hmm. So, it's so you want to make like a reaction game? Yeah, like a reaction game where it's I, I sort of press the button when it's correct, and then I get a sort of correct answer. And if I press it at the wrong time, then I get a failure mm -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. Some, something like that. Sounds good. So I guess we'll start by jumping into the code Editor. environment. And here on the microbit.org webpage, it might look a bit different when you uh, have a look at it, because it changes a bit depending on uh, where we are uh, uh, in time, since it's a yeah. developing site. Yeah, so they have a lot of, like, for example, b uh, beta versions right now, but uh, that will probably change. But for now, we're looking for the Python editor. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll go there and start it. Uh, well, it, it's also good to open the documentation in a new tab, uh, so you can have that uh, next to your editor. OK, so I'll start with opening the documentation, and mm -hmm. then I'll open this editor. So mm -hmm. I have two uh, tabs, one with the documentation and one with the editor. Mm -hmm. And when we start the editor, we get this uh, standard code. Uh, but we're going to use, I think, a bit of it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep it there. We can keep it there for now. Mm -hmm. But the first thing I would want to do, I guess, is to get started with the actual uh, visualization mm. of the uh, LEDs. Mm. And I would want some kind of like continuation. Con yeah, some kind of animation that sort of continues on and on and on mm. within mm. the the while true loop. That mm. when you start it. It starts and it just continues. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas on a good visualization? Yeah. Yeah, so we've been working with pictures before, uh, and I know there are, there are some pictures that like represent uh, a clock. It's it's a clock with one arm, so it points at uh, different uh, numbers of the clock. So I if I go into one. the images of uh, of the the, uh, the documentation, the documentation the uh, let's see down here. Oh, there okay, I see. Yeah. Image clock. So I have 12 pictures here from 1 to 12. Yeah, so basically it's like a line that uh, moves around in the circle. OK, so it starts in the top with 0, mm. and then it moves around all the way. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, so I guess I'll just pop in all those 12 images then. Well, I, I found there's actually uh, an easier way to do this, where you just need only one line of code to take all these 12 pictures. That sounds much better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I found that as an example in the on the direction uh, tutorial. Uh, there they use it to make a compass that shows uh, in which direction north ah, is. Ah, OK. So I see. So here on the second line, it says display dot show image all clocks. Yeah. And then there's this sharp parenthesis with where it says needle inside. Yeah. But so that goes to something before. Mm, yeah, so this all clocks uh, is uh, a collection of these 12 pictures. It's an array. And by putting in a number in the square brackets, you can choose which picture you want to get out of this array. So then I can take this line of code. If I copy that mm. to start with, and I open the editor, and I exchange, I'll take away both of these lines. Yeah. And Basically I'll ten. insert mm. the display show image all clocks. But then I don't want to show just one of these numbers. I want to show any one of them. Yeah, we uh, want to go through all of them. Yeah, right? in a series. So I guess I would need to make a variable. Yeah, because we want to, sh we want to uh, have a number that chooses which picture we get, but that number needs to change all the time. So, uh, And this, this variable now is called needle. But yeah. I mean, what, what do you call variables? Well, you can come up with any name you like yourself. Uh, that's easy so you understand what it's for. Uh, in, in these kind of cases, they often uh, use uh, the letter i for index. So I'll change needle to i. Yeah. So now we have a true loop that where it will always display uh, this series of clocks. And it will uh, pause for two seconds between each. Yeah, well, almost. We're not completely there. Because we say i, but the computer doesn't know yet what i is. Ah, of course. So we need to make that variable. Yeah, we need to make the variable, and we need to change that variable also. S so I guess it needs to come before the display. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a, a line there. Yeah. 
So okay. what do I need to do this variable then? Uh, in this case, we're going to make use of a for loop. Uh, so Where you sort of define the variable within that for loop. Yeah. And so for, I guess it starts with for then. Yeah, you can write for. And with this editor, what is nice is that you can now hit the tab button, and it will give you, uh, oh. it will complete some parts for you there. So four, and then I guess where it item. says item now is the variable. Yeah, so there we write our i. So I'll take away the three other ones there. Mm -hmm. And then this i uh, needs to go through a range of numbers. Uh, the yeah, from the 0 to the 12. From 0 to 11, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's 12 pictures, but uh, the array starts with the number 0. So it's 0 to 11. So I'll take away the items here. Yeah. And there we're going to have a range instead. A range. And then we uh, open bracket. Open bracket. And then it's 0, 12. And close bracket. And I need to keep the colon. And we keep the colon there, yeah. OK, and the next line. If, if you would like uh, remove the column or forget that, uh, it would be a typical thing where the, you would get an error message on your display of your microbit when you try to upload the code. So if I make a uh, sort of failure somewhere in the code, it will actually tell us which line of code yeah. it's got a problem with. Yeah, so then you can go back to your code and see, OK, what is ah, it? That that's I quite neat if you have a mm. long piece of code. Yeah. But this uh, documentation thing with the hashtag, I can no, take that Yeah, we can that remove away. that. But that's where we want our code to be. So we need to uh, put an, a tab in front of our display.show. Over here? Yes. Like so? Yeah, and you can remove the empty line there. Like so? Exactly. And the same for the sleep. And this tab means that Oops. now we put our code inside of this for loop. So we have two loops. We have the while loop. Inside of that, we have a for loop. And inside of that, we have our two lines of code there. And I'm thinking about the sleep, because now it will sleep for two seconds between each tick. Yeah, that's quite slow. It's very slow. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's make it 10 times faster. Yeah. If I take away a zero here, oops. Oh. Get 200. I get 200. That feels that's probably good enough to start with. Yeah. So where do we go from here? Then now it will go round and round. But I haven't any button code yet. No. So now what do we want to have? Like well, I guess I, I want it so that if I press the A button when the line is pointing towards the A button, then I want it to say win. Mm. And when it's something else, I want it to say fail. OK. So then we need something to check uh, when if we press the button. Y yeah. Uh, so that will be an if statement. And we'll do that on the next line. Yeah. So I do an if. Mm. So here you would uh, want to check whether or not the button is being pressed down. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it is you write uh, this code, but that's a typical case where you would go to the documentation if you don't remember exactly how to write these things. OK, so I'll pop over to documentation. And here I actually see there's a buttons. category for buttons. Yeah. So perhaps somewhere inside of here. Yeah, so this is uh, also a tutorial with all kinds of examples. And I think it's quite far down that they okay, explain. I'll scroll down a bit here and see if. Uh, the thing we're looking for here, events. So there we have an example. Ah, here I see an if line. Yeah. If button A is, is pressed, pressed so then that's the something one. should happen. Yeah. That's the one we want. Mm -hmm. I'll copy that and go to the editor and replace, I'll in that there. replace it there. OK, so now we have if button A is pressed, mm. what should happen then? Well, I want, so if it's pressed, then I, inside of that, there's two options. Because if it's pressed and it's on the, uh, the line where the LEDs point towards the A button, mm. then I want it to say win. Mm. Other, otherwise, else I would want it to say fail. Yeah. So, so it's an if inside of the if. Yeah, exactly. Ah, OK, so then I need to make another indenture here. Mm. So here we put another if statement, so where we check so whether or not we're on the right picture. And that picture, now let's see here. So it starts with 0. Yeah, so uh, picture 0 is pointing straight up. And then it and goes like the clock goes. So it would be picture 9 then, I guess. Yeah, I think that's probably the one pointing towards uh, the A button. So if our integer, yeah, our, our, our i variable, sorry, mm? is equal to 
Yeah. Nine. Except that now, in such a case where we want to check whether something is equal to, then we need to have two times the uh, equal to symbol. Like so? Like that. Why, why is that the case? Because if you have only one uh, equal sign, it means that you actually put uh, nine inside of the i, so that the i becomes nine. Ah, so with just one, i equals nine. Yeah. But in this case, we will want to check if i is equal to nine. Yeah. And for that checking thing. Yeah. So now we get an answer, it's true or it's false. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why we need the two of them. Mm -hmm. And then we need a colon as a well. A colon. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I, if it's not, then I want to use the display command. Mm -hmm. The one, yeah. So I want to have this scrolling function again. So if I don't remember completely wrong, it's uh, display. display dot scroll. scroll. Mm -hmm. And there we have open parentheses. Text. So we need that one exactly. And then I write win. And close like it. So. Mm. And now if we press the button but it's not at 9, we want something else to happen. So then exactly, we need an else. else. And that should be on the same line as, uh, uh, on the same height as if. Like so. Exactly. Yeah, and a colon, a colon there as well. And then I, I can take this display, right? Yeah. Uh, and copy that. Copy that. And I can put that there mm -hmm. and then there. what should it say it says fail fail good so i guess yeah that should be it right? i think we're done so let's download that code and plug the micro bit in and i'll show it in the finder and once the micro bit is plugged in i should be able to pull it over yeah like so and then we it's see blinking. the lid blinking to transfer the code. Let's see when it starts. And there we go. There we have the code. Yeah, it's S rotating. So let's so try. So let's see if I can win this game by pressing at the right time. There we go. Win. Win. Nice. And let's see what happens when I press it at the wrong time. Fail. Okay. Yeah. So I've actually made a little game in Python. Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Uh, and we've also uh, had a look at for. Yeah, we have uh, used a for loop. We've used the if statements. We've used, used if buttons. Else and buttons. Yeah. And we've also had a look at the documentation parts. Yeah. So this is how we make a small game in Python. <laughs>